Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be sharing a really interesting bass mixing and production technique. I'm going to show two ways to achieve this. The first is very simple and can be done in any DAW. The second is more complex. It's specifically for FL Studio, uh, but it might just work perfectly with the way you like to think about these things and produce. So let's just dive right in and find out more. What we're going to specifically do in this tutorial is not standard sidechain compression. We're actually only going to be sidechaining the low end of the bass. So I'll spend a minute explaining why we want to do this, but if you already know why, just skip ahead to these times for the main bulk of the tutorial. So let's quickly just take a listen to what we're working with today. You can hear the bass, the kick, and a few other instruments. So if I just solo in on the bass, you can hear and see that it has lots of frequencies in this bass. We've got sub frequencies and mid and high frequencies that give it this really nice texture. If I were to use regular sidechain compression using the Fruity Limiter plugin, for instance, I've got a tutorial here showing how to do that. The bass would end up sounding like this on its own. And that's a very familiar sound dance music relies on it. It's a really cool technique. There's nothing wrong with it. But there are these particular times, maybe one in 10 occasions where that really dramatic push and pull sort of pumping sound is not what you want in your track. You want something more subtle and you want the top end of the bass to remain constant and only the sub to move out of the way of the kick. And that's precisely what we're going to be doing in this video. The first technique can be done in any DAW. It's really simple, gives you a lot of control though. So just make sure that your kick and your bass are going to two separate channels on the mixer, just like this. Simple as that. Don't worry about this drums channel here. There's no complex routing for this technique. We don't need to do anything on the kick channel. So go to the bass channel and load an EQ. Just whatever EQ you like using, you can use pretty much any one. I'm just going to use the fruity EQ. I'm just going to select a different preset, this three bands preset, because it simplifies the view a little bit. Now what we want to do is basically automate this low band so that it just ducks down whenever a kick occurs. In your EQ plugin, once you've got the band selected, just navigate to wherever you can control the band's gain. On this plugin, it's here. It might be a, num a numerical readout on your plugin. All we're gonna do is create an automation clip for that particular control. Simple as that. Right click, create automation clip. As you can see on my playlist, a small automation clip's been created. If your automation clip was created and it was super uh, big like this, just drag it from the right hand side until it's smaller. Just the length of your kick drum, really. Now what we're going to do is on every single kick drum, all we have to do is just automate that up and down. There is a trick to make this easier. So what I'm going to do is go back into the EQ. I'm going to make sure that this is on zero and I'm going to copy the value. Now go back to the automation clip, double left click, and on maximum value up here, just right click and paste the value. So with both of these on the same screen, now the top of the automation clip is actually zero and drag into the bottom is pretty much negative infinity, I suppose. So now all you need to do is add points and create a curve that starts low and then goes back up to zero gain. And you're just gonna take that automation clip and you're just going to paste it over onto every single kick. So wherever you have a kick, you're just going to keep clicking the automation clip in. Now if I loop this round, you'll just see that gain is being removed from the bass every single time a kick hits. But we still have a really nice mid and high end to that bass. So now all you need to do is just fine tune your envelope, look at the length of your kick drum, see where you sort of want uh, your frequencies to start fading back in. The idea behind this technique is that it's more transparent, so it's not as in your face. Let's take a listen. And of course you can adjust the frequency up here so that you're re reducing even more of the bass frequencies. Now I've seen people do this with both a low shelf and also just a low sort of dipping filter like this. My advice is just use whichever one sounds best. So really listen closely, make sure there's no clicks, pops, make sure it doesn't sound phasey or chorus or any nonsense like that and you'll be just fine. I particularly like this first method for when you want an enormous amount of control just to get it sounding exactly the way you want. However, it's not perfect for every situation. It's great if the kick drums on a, always doing the same pattern, but if you have very complex drums, the automation clips can become really complicated. So I'm gonna reset all of this and start again. 
So the second method is a little bit more involved, but there's not really any complex routing or, or anything like that. So again, kick and bass need to be on separate channels. This time on the kick channel, we're going to add in a plugin. I like adding it onto the first insert and I'm going to select a plugin. It's called the Fruity Peak Controller. It should be right near the top in the controller section, Fruity Peak Controller. So it adds in like this. Make sure that it's unmuted because sometimes it starts off muted. And what I'm going to do is initially just change the bass control until it's at 50. Now you can see that at the top left hand corner of FL Studio, just make sure it's at 50. Or if you can't get it, type in the value 50. And it'll get it there for you. Now if I just solo the kick and play it, I'm just going to mute it. You can see that it's detecting each time the kick is hitting. It's one of the reasons why it's called a peak controller. I just muted it because you didn't really need to hear it. Uh, but this doesn't alter the sound of the kick in any way. So next on your bass channel, we're going to load up an EQ. I'm just going to use Fruity Parametric EQ2 again, because it's really simple. It's stock. It's a free plugin. So here we go. We're going to do the same thing as last time. I'm just going to grab the first band here. And this time, instead of creating an automation clip for it, I'm going to right click and select link to controller. Now this bit starts confusing people a lot, but just bear with me, it is more simple than it seems. Don't worry about any of this nonsense, just look for internal controller, okay? And now I've got a load of different automation clips because this is a real project I'm working with. So look for the controller plugins, Fruity Peak Controller on the Kick channel, and select Peak Control Peak. The next step is that on the mapping formula, Press this little arrow here, that's a left click, and select inverted. That just means that every time there's a peak, instead of the controller raising the value, it's going to lower the value instead. Hit accept. Now let's see what the EQ does. It's automatically doing it for us. Now to make sure that it's removing the right frequencies, just grab the frequency dial here. Something that I really like about this technique is that if you move your kick drums around, it automatically detects where those uh, peaks are and it does all the rest for you. So there's no automation clips. Let's go over a few important controls. The most important one, to be honest, is this volume control here. So less, less gain reduction, more. Very dramatic gain reduction. Now, when you're adjusting this, be sure to listen out for clicks, pops, any stuff like that, because sometimes if you push this too far, the EQ doesn't respond very smoothly to it. So just bear that in mind. Always let your ears guide you with these techniques. Um, don't just do something because I tell you which values to type in, okay? So if I listen to the music now, what you'll notice is that there's a little bit more room for the kick, but the nice sort of continuous growl of the bass doesn't stop so the track just has a lot more momentum to it so let's listen to that so that's everything for today but just remember just because you've got this technique now you don't want to use it in every song. It's only appropriate in certain situations and often a typical sidechain often actually does sound better, especially in genres like dance music where it really creates a lot of push and pull in the whole track. This is just for those more ambient times, more subtle times when you want to control your low end without going crazy. And for anyone wondering, that bass is included in my new Serum sound pack, which I've left a link to in the description. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great week. I'm probably off to get a haircut because this is going a bit crazy here, and I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now. So if I open up an EQ on my bass... Oh no, come on! Don't crash! You don't have to crash! Come on! No... Mate! Oh... Flipping Flamingo.